Let's see. We found a turtle. A turtle, turtle. Turtle, turtle. Hey, everybody. It's Aquila. And this is a Lefty Knitter podcast. This is episode 221. Coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. This is a podcast about uh, yarn mostly. So my crafting is based mostly with yarn. And that's knitting, crocheting, cranking on my Earl Becker gear heart, and just whatever I feel like getting up to. So I have to wash these socks that I need to show you guys. So I need to show you now. So I, this is a weekly podcast. Everything is down below. If you need links or names or whatever, or if you have questions, please ask me and I will try to respond in a timely manner. But let me show you these. So I cranked these based on a pattern by Debbie Brandle. This was shown in the uh, one of the crank ins, I believe, and Earl Backer has it on their YouTube channel, I believe, also. But they posted it in one of the groups. I believe it was the Earl Backer uh, Facebook group, and the pattern is all written out there, and that's where I got it. I didn't follow it exactly, um, but I did just show a video. I'll try to remember to link it up here if you're interested. I videoed my process of making those but I need to wash them because honestly they're a little big now you do crank these with lycra and lycra is supposed to like suck it up a little bit so I'm hoping that happens but let me show you they are supposed to be look there's some of the lycra I'll trim that off they're supposed to be baby socks but they're a little big to me I mean this is my hand, so I feel like that's big. So I'm gonna throw these in a laundry bag. I have some laundry bags. I have some laundry to do today, and I'm gonna throw them in there, wash and dry. This is a super wash yarn with the Lycra, and we're gonna see how they come out. So we showed you how big it was before. There's the tips of my finger, and it's coming down almost my whole hand, okay? So let's see what these come out like. I'm excited. I am excited because I would love to be able to make some baby socks for people. Maybe even longer cuffs. Because babies tend to kick socks off. They kick so much, right? So, yeah. We'll have to see how these actually turn out. I'll have to give them to somebody that has a baby and see what they say about it. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So, socks have been washed and they've been dried let's compare. I wish I would have like actually measured it, but I didn't. So, oh well. That's the tip of my fingers. And that's like holding it all the way down. If I can screenshot from earlier, the video earlier, I will do that so you can kind of see. So they are significantly smaller. I just feel like I don't have a baby sock to compare it to because I don't have a baby no more. But they're pretty darn cute, aren't they? <laughs> Alright. So they came out really cute. To say they fit a baby? Don't know. Baby socks. I have my cow upstairs. The secret skein that was um, Telly Bean. That is in water right now. Getting ready to... I'm going to get ready to squish it out. And I can pin it and block it and then that'll be another project like completely done and I had a lot of yarn left I know I measured I put it in my project notes but I think I only used well I can tell you actually I'm sitting right here and I have it open projects so do you guys do you use Ravelry some people don't always use Ravelry I always use Ravelry I like documenting everything and if I have finished knitting it and I just haven't blocked it and woven ends, I put it at 99% and I always put my end date in of when I finished actually knitting the project because unless there's embellishments that still need to be done, like if you have to add buttons and stuff, then I'll wait to add the end date. But I always like adding the end date when the actual knitting part is done. So secret skein, I have it marked as 99% done because technically I don't have the finished photos and whatnot. I used only um, two-thirds of this skein. So I still have 146 yards left. That doesn't seem right. This does not seem like 146 yards. 
but I guess that's right. <laughs> I love using Ravelry for this. I've told you guys in a few episodes back that I like um, cleaning up my stash too and like figuring out if I've used it in scrap socks. Like I have my machine right over there and I use it, I have like bins with like, whoop, that way, down here of like really small scraps and I use that for like my monster socks. So, um, or whatever you want to call them, like Franken's, Franken socks because it's all these just mismatched yarns. Um, so this will end up going over there. Um, it's a lot left, but it's also like a variegated skein that I don't know what I would use it in other than like socks. I like making Hazel all her little dolls. So this could be like a dress for one of her dolls, etc. So we'll see what this ends up going into. I don't know yet, but yeah, I'll show you guys that shawl, that shawl, that cowl, because I'm really excited to see how much that blocks out too. I think it's going to block out a whole lot. Um, the only thing is I did notice the water was kind of um, bluish, so that's okay. I don't think it'll stain the green too much. It's not enough to like really dye it, so I'm not worried about that. Woo! But cute baby socks. I don't have a blocker. I should make like a cardboard blocker so I can take pictures because that would be really cute. I could do that. Maybe I will. Hey everybody, it's Aquila. I've already said that in this episode, sorry. But today is Friday, September 29th. And I'm going to insert a clip right here because I have a thing I need to show you first. So I need to put this clip in because I'm gifting this to somebody. But in the last episode, I told you about dream knitting I was going to do because I saw this pattern on the Cozy Up Knits Girls podcast. It's not their pattern. It's a pattern they had made, the Horntail Beanie. Now, this designer has a bunch of other ones, too. This called for, you could use three different weights. There was worsted bulky and super bulky and then they gave you the needle sizes to use for all of those and I told you I was going to use that yarn from fully spun and I did I still have like 20 grams left I'm really surprised at that I probably could have made it longer but then it would have been really big but here let me show you guys because I'm going to gift it to my friend um I was working on it actually over at their house and they were I was and she was like well I could use a winter hat and I was like it's yours because I was only making this to make it because I wanted the experience of making it because it looked like a cool pattern. It definitely was a cool pattern. So let's show you. The colors don't seem super accurate. It looks like it's being blown out, but I'll put it on. I'll show you guys. All right. Sorry. That's, I got crazy clipped hair, but it doesn't matter. But it's plenty big. I actually probably could have went down a size and then used even more yarn, actually. But I think it's great. I think it turned out really, really great. It's nice and squishy. Um, yeah, so I'll be gifting this to my friend today. So I made it in, well, really less than a day because I had it done almost all in one day yesterday. I started it at like noon and didn't constantly work on it, but yeah, it was a really fun knit. It was really enjoyable. I would make it again. All right. So I just wanted to show you guys because finished object. <laughs> it's crazy. I love these quick projects and I love that I'm using yarn out of my stash. Uh, it's making me really, really, really happy and excited about crafting. So there we go. So it was gifted to the recipient and they loved it. So that's always cool. I, I love being able to just make things that I want to try to make and if I don't like it I know people I can like gift it to that would appreciate it so I'm really grateful uh, about that in my life um and the recipient of that is actually the mom of Hayes's best friend and while she was here um what day was that it was her birthday so she was here for her birthday and um mom had to work so I had to work too but uh no did I take off I took off that day brain can't remember 
So I had asked V, <laughs> I said, uh, go to this stash here and is there anything in there you like? And she's like, yeah, I like that one. And I was like, do you want to make a hat? And she said, yeah, I want to make a hat. So we made a hat for her birthday. Her and Hayes both cranked a little bit and I made that on my Addy machine. So I use this yarn here. It is Mandala Sequins by Lion Brand. And this is the color sequence. And the name is called Beryl, B-E-R-Y-L. So I have a little bit left. I asked her, I said, she has um, two baby dolls that she like loves. They're like, her. yeah. Um, and I was like, do, do either of your baby dolls need a hat to match? And she's like, nah. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, what do I, so I need to use this up and I was not sleeping well last night to say the least. So I was up and I was thinking about, I know I can make the double thick hats on my Addy machine. I, I cranked her hat and I cranked that kind of hat, the double thickness. It's representative like the muscle bar hat where you knit this long tube and then you stuff it inside itself. And that's how you can make really nice hats on these machines. This is the Addy King size. I have it linked below. I think, I hope the link still works. I, I probably should check that. This is the Addy King. Um, and so I was looking up, I have the King, which is 40, oh gosh, hold on. It is 46 stitches. I can never remember that. And I have the Addy smaller one, which is 22. Um, and I was like, oh, can I do a baby hat on that? And the baby hats I found on the 22, uh, there was a little more work involved. So I found another YouTuber and I found they made just, it's like zero to three months. So it's kind of newborn, you know, and zero to three months for this hat. So I'm going to attempt that today using uh, what I have left of this. And I would really like to work a few hats every month and be able to donate them um, to like a hospital. That would be that would be really awesome. So I've been, I might do that in this video so you might see it. We'll see. Um, oh, I wanted to talk to you guys. The spooky, the spooky Halloween cow. I don't remember what she's calling it. Telebi knits. The pattern is releasing one. Uh, sorry. Rain. one clue a day I'm using yarns I'm using these yarns I showed you guys these in the last episode and <clears throat> I want to say something about this because Andy Andy the Nitrous I'll link her down below she is going to be hosting a cast on party now she's Pacific time so she's going to wake up and do it's on Sunday is October 1st dry is done October 1st is Sunday so she's going to be starting a zoom on October 1st um, at like 6.30 in the morning her time. So I don't know what, exactly what time that is here. I'm thinking it's like 9.30. I'm going to try to maybe join that. I have another Zoom that's not here nor there. But uh, yeah, so she's going to do a cast on party for that make along. She, w I haven't seen any notes of when the designer is going to be Stephanie Lotvin. I'm not sure when they are releasing that time-wise. I know they say, you know, October 1st, but does that mean it'll be an automatic update, say, at like 3 in the morning or what? So, I'm not sure about that. So, if it is not released by the time Andy has her Zoom, we'll just be talking. So, I just want to put that out there because also, Andy... If I knew how to insert like confetti and stuff, I would do that. Um, has signed a lease for a brick and mortar store. So Andy had pre previously worked at a store in Rose, I want to say Rosebud, Roseburg, Oregon. And that brick and mortar store had closed. So she has been on this journey to open a brick and mortar store back in her town because this is what she loves doing. She loves helping people. She loves getting people to be part of the Fibercraft community. And so if you have any extra monies laying around and you can help support, Andy has the website up for um, all the stuff she has to sell. 
it's all it's like an online store right now obviously the naughty nitrous and so you can go there and buy things and help keep supporting her in you know being able to put even more stuff into the brick and mortar store so that no more details that I know about like opening and stuff like that tune in to Andy though and check that out because I'm sure she will be putting up as much details as possible vlogtober's coming I'm not sure what I'm doing I like doing the daily vlogs I don't know I sometimes when I do the daily vlogs then I feel like I have nothing to show for the weekly videos so I have an idea in my brain it's cooking it's cooking so I might put it out there now do not be like um it might not be completely like hand knitting personal life related we'll see okay we'll see we'll see if I can even start and keep up with it but I just have this idea that I can't get out of my head let me show you another finished object is the secret skein shawl I blocked it I haven't woven the ends but I've blocked it so this is the telly bean and this is Stephanie Lotvin is the designer I blocked it the one thing that I find weird I don't know I kind of wish it was a straight across opening but it's not but in all of the pictures that she put, puts on like her pattern pages it always seems like it's folded down like that but I did block this it smells really good I don't remember the wash I used but it smells really really good and of course I got to weave in my ends but it opened up a whole lot it didn't open up as much as her picture because in her picture on her pattern it goes like over her she has it pulled down over her shoulders so I feel like I probably would have had to go up a needle size or maybe even blocked it like super aggressive but I do believe I'm going to gift this as a Christmas present. So, like I said, they kind of tuck it in like that. But it's still beautiful. I think it's really super beautiful. So yeah, there's a finished object. Pretty, two ends, but whatever. I'm not getting into the hardcore details here. But I have one more project I need to show you guys. Because I'm waiting for the make-along to start, and then I'm not sure what to do. And so I just cast on things that I know I enjoy. So I don't know, this is probably like my 10th photographer hat. <laughs> if you've been around for a long time. I love making this hat. It's by Lavanya Patricella. It's calls for worsted, but I've adapted it to use um, DK. So I hold a lot of my single skeins double and make hats or DK weight hats if I have DK on hand. And I've done worsted too. So I've done all of them. The only thing I do is I modified to use I don't know if I modified the needle sizes but I modified how many stitches you cast on so I cast on 96 stitches for the DK I used yarn this was in a previous sweater I made for myself if I can find the picture of it I will insert it but John dyed this yarn and so I had a skein left and I was like oh I can make a photographer hat with that and then I can either a gift it or if John wants it so he already said who the recipient that I was thinking of said, go for it. So I'm going to gift it to this person. I probably should take this off, but it's fine. I'm just going to wear all the knitwear. So here is the photographer hat. Uh, the only other modification I think is how many inches I do for the ribbing versus here. But you always, you stop knitting at 10 inches and then decrease. So it's very like bulbous looking at the top but it fits really well John this is his most favorite hat ever <laughs> so when I make him new hats it's pretty much always the photographer hat so and I have one myself and so does Hayes so
So I have quite a few finished objects in this episode. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but I'm waiting for the cast on for the make along, and I, so I'm just doing things. I'm just doing things. Here we are. So I love this hat. And it came out so nice. It's so soft. This is, I believe, Nitpick's stroll that he got and dyed the bear yarn. So I have quite a bit left. It'll go in my scrap bins for my sock machine, which is sitting right next to me. So maybe he'll get some funky socks that are all mismatched and have this in them. <laughs> so that's what I have to show you guys for this episode so far. I really don't know what I'll show you now tomorrow because I was going to hold off and show this tomorrow, but why not show it today while I'm recording? Ah, love it. So, yeah. Two finished objects. Really three. <laughs> That's okay. What else am I going to do with myself? All right. Infant baby hats. That's my next thing. And they should be super fast based on the video I watch. All right. Till the next one. <laughs> Bye. It is now Saturday, September 30th, and let's round up this video. So first off, let's talk about those baby hats. They worked out really well. I put the link down below for the person that YouTube that I watched. I was able to make three with that leftover yarn. So I have one. This one I didn't hold the tension as tight, so it's a little bit bigger, but that's, it's okay. I am excited to be able to make these and donate them. 
look how cute that is. Okay, and then two. I know it has these sparkly bits on it, so I hope they're okay for little baby heads, the little sequins. And then three. This one, I ended up doing a double round of crochet at the bottom. Ah, they're so cute. Okay. All right, so I have a winner to announce. So I'm going to play video here and talk about how you could have entered if you don't remember. We had showed uh, some Legos that we purchased. Hold on one second. Okay, back, sorry. We had purchased some Legos and Hazel and I showed the characters, not characters, the people that they are and they were the Spice Girls. So congratulations to everyone. I used the comment picker. I couldn't put in Spice Girls because some people actually named them. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to pick from all the comments. And I picked two winners and that was probably showing here. But the names were Jennifer Stack and Kitchen Counter Crafter. So please, please, please reach out. Uh, Instagram is best or Ravelry. Information will be down below for both of those. And if you already have that uh, Telly Bean Knits Haunted Cow that I'm doing that starts tomorrow and you've already purchased it. Pick a different pattern from Telly Bean. You could do the secret skein here and it's a one skein. So pick a pattern. I think most of their patterns are like under $10. So go ahead and pick one from that designer and I will gift them to you if um, you don't want that cow and you want a different pattern from them. Just We'll figure it out. Like under $10, I think it, most of them are anyway, except for maybe sweater patterns. But I was thinking the cows. So she has another Halloween one that's on her page too, if you're not into the mystery idea. And the spider web one that I showed you guys in previous videos. So yeah, that's what I have to talk about. I did pick a bag. Um, I don't have a lot of knitting. I, well, I shouldn't say that. I'm looking at my stack. I probably have, I don't know, between 10 and 15 bags, but I do not have a lot of bags. I don't really buy a lot of bags. I feel like the bags I have are all pretty sufficient. Like the last one I bought was my big giant bag that was um, for like sweater, a sweater sized bag. So I had purchased this, oh God, it's twisted yarn fiber. And I'm pretty sure I bought this at Maryland Sheep and Wool like many years ago. Um, but it is a drawstring bag. And I thought this was very Halloween-ish. So, and the inside is just plain and there's no pockets in it. It's very simple and I'm okay with that. So this is the bag I'll be using for, I don't really talk about my bags on the podcast if you've not noticed. So... All right. Well, that's all I have for you. I have not listened to any new audiobooks. The last one I listened to, I told you I didn't really care for, and I just haven't picked up a new one. I did finish, finally, the last two episodes of the Just Like That, the Sex in the City, 20 years later. It was so good. I just really enjoy <laughs> seeing the characters again. Um, and then on Netflix is a four-part series about, in, it's called Encounters, and I don't know what I really believe. I mean, there's not, I don't, I, I don't personally have evidence <laughs> that I've seen like aliens or UFOs, but I'm not going to discount pe what people have seen. So th they talk about in this series, um, encounters where multiple people, like, multiple like one of them was like the phenom whatever they had seen or whatever it was like you know more than 10 people and I think I how how can you discount something that like that many people that didn't corroborate collab collaborate corrobor corroborate corroborate it's not even a word is it how can you discount that I don't know it's very difficult to be on one side or the other so I just enjoyed watching that. If you're into like watching the documentary type stuff on Netflix, it's called Encounters. So yeah. So I hope everybody's well. Please take care of yourself. It is October tomorrow, like September flew. I think I've heard that from so many people that September just like flew by, flew by. It did for me too. It flew by. But 
Yeah. So take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Check in when you can. And peace, love, and happy crafting. Oh, stay tuned for the little bit of video I always do after. Um, we purchased a few things at Spirit Halloween <laughs> that we didn't really need, but we bought them anyway. All right. Peace, love, and happy crafting. Bye.